Today we'll be showing how to install an ARB bull bar on the front of a 2004 Toyota 4Runner. Raise the vehicle on a twin post lift. Begin the removal of the lower radiator grill by releasing these six clips using needle nose pliers. Once all the clips are released, pry up on the grill using a non-abrasive upholstery tool. Remove the three top bumper clips by prying up on the center pin and then on the clip using a small standard screwdriver. Remove all the lower bumper cover bolts using a 10 millimeter socket. Remove the driver's side bumper cover to fender bolt using a 10 millimeter socket. Peel the lower part of the apron back out of the way. Disconnect the signal light and fog light connectors by depressing the tab and pulling on the connector. Disconnect the lower headlight trim by removing this screw using a 10 millimeter socket. Remove this trim by popping it loose at the outside. Remove the passenger side bumper cover to fender bolt. Peel the passenger side wheel well apron back and disconnect the signal and fog light connectors. Remove the passenger side lower headlight trim. Remove the bumper cover by popping it loose one side at a time. Once loose, set it aside for safekeeping. You'll likely need parts of this bumper cover later. Remove the energy absorber and set it aside. Remove the driver side splash apron retainer clips. Remove the passenger side splash apron retainer clips. Lay both splash aprons back out of the way. Loosen the front bumper subassembly nuts using a 14 millimeter deep socket and a breaker bar. Once loose, remove all four nuts. Then remove all four of the passenger side subassembly nuts using the same method as shown before. Remove the front bumper subassembly and set it aside. Remove the driver side bumper cover support by removing the two bolts using a 10 millimeter socket. Once the bolts are removed, pop the support loose at both ends. Remove the passenger side bumper cover support in the same way. Mask the driver's side fender is shown so the lower section of the fender can be painted. Then paint the lower section of the fender using a good quality gloss black paint. Once the paint is dried, remove the masking tape. Mask the passenger side fender and paint it in the same way as shown before. If the bumper mounts are rusted, clean them with a scratch bright pad and then paint them to reduce the risk of rust. Disconnect this hose bracket using a 12 millimeter socket. Then remove the bracket using a 10 millimeter socket. Pilot drill this captive nut using a 3 8 drill bit. Then enlarge the hole to finish size using a half inch drill bit. Position the passenger side chassis mount brace such that the bottom hole aligns and install the supplied M12 fine threaded bolt with a flat washer and a lock washer. Leave this bolt loose for now.
At the top hole, position an M12 flat washer between the bracket and the frame to serve as a spacer. While holding the flat washer in place, insert an M12 by 1.75 by 40 millimeter bolt with an M12 flat washer. Then from the inside of the frame, install an M12 lock washer and an M12 by 1.75 nut. Leave this nut loose for now. Clip the captive nut in the supplied handle. Extend the nut through the frame and align it with the rear hole on the bracket. Then thread the M12 by 1.75 by 40 millimeter bolt and flat washer into the nut. Leave the bolt loose for now. Using a flat screwdriver, force the bracket rearward and tighten the top bolt using a 19 millimeter socket. Tighten the bottom bolt using a 17 millimeter socket. Tighten the rear bolt using a 19 millimeter socket. Torque all of these M12 bolts to 57 foot pounds. After all the nuts and bolts are tight, break off the handle by working it side to side. Ensure that all the tubing and wiring is routed in a safe place. Install the driver side chassis mount brace in the same way as demonstrated on the passenger side. Position the chassis mount bracket on the chassis mount brace studs using the middle three holes. Secure the passenger side of the bracket using the four flange nuts that were removed earlier. Secure the driver's side chassis mount in the same way. Snug all eight flange nuts, but leave them loose for now. Ready one of the supplied M12 by 1.75 by 40 millimeter bolts by installing a lock washer and a flat washer. While holding one of the supplied 8 mm spacers between the bracket and the brace, install the M12 bolt. Secure the bolt with a flat washer and an M12 by 1.75 nut. While holding the bolt using a 19 mm open end wrench, snug the nut using a 19 mm socket. Leave the nut loose for now. Repeat the installation of these same size bolts, spacers, washers, and nuts at the driver's side top as well as at the passenger side bottom and top of the chassis mount bracket. Once all four of these bolts, washers, spacers, and nuts have been installed and tightened, torque them to 57 foot-pounds. Once all four of the corner bolts and nuts are torqued, Torque the eight flange nuts to 79 foot-pounds. With the help of an assistant, position the bull bar on the chassis bracket and align the holes. Install a supplied M10 by 1.5 by 30 millimeter bolt and a flat washer at the top on the driver's side. Secure the bolt with a flat washer and a nut. Install a second bolt two washers and a nut on the passenger side to hold the bull bar in place. Once the bull bar is secure, install the remaining four bolts, washers, and nuts. Once all six bolts are in place, snug the nuts, but leave them loose for now. With the six bull bar to chassis bracket bolts still loose, position the bull bar. We used a transmission jack and two under hoist jack stands, but you could use whatever works for you. The bull bar should be a little less than one inch away from the bottom of the fender and evenly spaced on both sides. With the bull bar properly positioned, tighten the six bull bar bracket bolts and then torque them to 32 foot pounds. Once the bull bar to bracket bolts have been torqued to spec, Remove the under hoist jack stands and transmission jack.
Now that the bull bar is properly positioned and the six attaching bolts have been torqued to spec, drill the pinning holes. Beginning at the upper hole on the passenger side, pilot drill the first hole using a 3 8 drill bit. Then enlarge the hole with a half inch drill bit. Once the hole is drilled, install a supplied M10 by 1.5 by 30 millimeter bolt and secure it with a flat washer and an M10 by 1.5 nut. Tighten the nut to 32 foot pounds. Repeat this same procedure on the passenger side bottom, driver side bottom, and the driver side top pinning bolts. Install the supplied bumper pads as shown. Be sure the studs fit through the holes properly. Once the pads are fitted, install the supplied M6 flange nuts from the back side of the bull bar. Once all the nuts are started, snug them using a 10 millimeter socket. Be careful not to over tighten these nuts, just snug is enough. Install the second bumper pad in the same way as the first. Begin the installation of the belly pan by installing the four supplied captive nuts in the bumper. Ready the six supplied M6 by 1.0 by 20 millimeter bolts by installing a lock washer and a flat washer on each one. Position the belly pan and align the holes. Install four bolts across the front and two bolts in the rear. Once all six bolts are started, tighten them to an estimated four foot pounds using a 10 millimeter socket. Beginning on the driver's side, Mark the inner fender apron as shown. Trim the apron using a utility knife. Be careful not to cut the electrical wires that are just behind the apron. Mark and trim the passenger side inner fender apron. The next step is assembling the light surrounds. Beginning with the driver side light surround, remove the screw thread protectors. Remove both screws by using a number two Phillips screwdriver. Then remove the lens cover. Remove the 21 watt light bulb and install the supplied 10 watt bulb. Replace the lens cover, ensuring that the yellow section is oriented in front of the 10 watt bulb just installed. Position the lamp assembly on the lamp surround, making sure that the yellow section is oriented toward the fog light opening. Reinstall both screws. While holding light pressure on the light, snug both screws using a Phillips screwdriver. The light surround is now ready for installation. Beginning on the driver's side, position the light surround in the bull bar opening. From the back side, position one of the supplied retainer clips as shown and secure it with one of the supplied screws. Thread the screw in, but leave it loose for now. Install the rest of the retainers as well. Once all the retainer brackets and screws are installed, Snug them in an increasingly tighter crisscross pattern, but be careful not to over tighten these screws. They are easily damaged. Install the second light surround by repeating all the previously shown steps. Install the two license plate grommets by tabbing them into place with a dead blow hammer. Position the license plate and install the two Phillips screws. Beginning on the driver's side, install the headlight trim by snapping the outside into place 
then installing the screw using a 10 millimeter socket. Install the passenger side headlight trim in the same way. Although this is not necessary, we found it more appealing to remove these rubber aprons. This is done by releasing the clips using a standard screwdriver. We removed both the passenger and driver side aprons. These driving lights are optional. However, should you decide to purchase and install them, simply follow the instructions supplied with the lights. The hardware is included. Place the bumper cover on a suitable work area. Reinstall the lower grille trim. Mask off the bumper cover approximately 3 inches away from the grille trim to protect the bumper cover during modification. Cut the bumper cover approximately 2 inches larger than the grille trim. We used the grill trim as a template or a guide for our jigsaw. Although you could simply mark a line two inches away from the grill trim where the cut is to be made. Once this section of the bumper cover has been removed, finish the jigsaw cut using diagonal cutting pliers. Cut away any remaining ribbing with the jigsaw or pliers. It may even be necessary to break some of the ribbing loose by hand. Position the bumper cover piece in the vehicle ensuring that the holes align properly. Mark the bumper cover piece where the final cut is to be made. Marking and cutting one end of the bumper piece at a time seems to work best. We cut the passenger side first. Once marked, remove the bumper cover piece and cut along the mark. Place the bumper cover piece back in the vehicle. Align the holes and mark the driver's side. Remove the bumper cover and cut along the line. Although we didn't find it necessary, you may want to smooth out the saw marks on the bumper cover with sandpaper or a file. Once satisfied with the shape and size of the bumper cover piece, position it in the vehicle and remove the masking tape. Reinstall the three bumper clips. Reinstall the grill piece by snapping it into place. Close the hood and check for fit and finish. That concludes today's presentation. We hope these instructions have been helpful to you. All the parts and supplies associated with this installation can be purchased through our website at www.lowrangeoffroad.com or by calling 801-805-6644.